we're one of those organizations that has gaily quoted the ultimatum game, a demonstration of the bankruptcy of homo economists. But uh, your book sends that ball right back over the net. So tell us about that. Yeah. So it's funny that you, when, when you said, Matthew, that you wanted to look at two of the controversial topics, we were, we, were, we were almost laughing when you said altruism, because not a single, as we've gone around the United States and in the UK, not anyone has ever called that controversial. So it's interesting that it's... Well, first of all, no one's ever heard of the ultimatum game except for right, this room. It. You see, so, we, we, we were an audience. You could choose between talking about prostitution or altruism, but this is an audience that is just so much more interested in goodness. Well, it's so much more interested in goodness than sex. Yeah. That's the RSA audience. Uh, <laughs> so, um, uh, Dumber with this fun part. Let me do the background of the history. So, within economics, there has been a long tradition of viewing uh, human behavior as being primarily motivated by self-interest. And uh, I would say that uh, in the 70s, a set of renegades, uh, renegades who I think are quite popular among this crowd, uh, began challenging those ideas and test those ideas. Uh, and it's very difficult to test for altruism in the real world because when barns used to burn down, uh, everyone would gather from the whole community to help build the barn again. And it certainly has a feel of altruism to it. Uh, and yet, uh, if you didn't help your neighbors build their barn, they wouldn't help you if your barn got built. Okay? So it's, it's much more complex than the idea that you simply want to help others. Uh, tied to it is an idea of reputation and insurance. So these economists had the idea that they should go into the lab and used college students to, to test these ideas. And this had been quite popular among psychologists, but almost unheard of among economists. There were just a handful of lab experiments in economics uh, in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, and 60s. Um, but eventually, what economists uh, came to do was to try to test using games, like the ultimatum game, the dictator game. And what they found over and over was that college students behaved as if they were incredibly giving and altruistic in the lab, that the, um, what, what economists have come to call social preferences were quite prevalent. Do you want to explain the ultimatum game? Just All right, so, Tim, well, where Levitt was about to get yeah. to, you know, we could fast forward a little bit and talk about the work of a, a colleague of Levitt's named John List. And that's really what, what the chapter is about is, um, just as an aside, when we write these books, what we try to do is um, not have them just be screeds or dogma, recitations of dogma, but have them be stories that revolve around a, a person, a character in some way. And maybe the driest character um, eligible for inclusion in a book like this is another academic research economist like John List, um, but that's who we chose for, for this uh, bit on altruism. And so he's a, a colleague of Levitt's at the University of Chicago, and Levitt actually began to do a lot of this work with him. And it revolved around trying to take the received wisdom about altruism that was derived from 20, 30 years worth of first lab work, but then extended well out into the lab. So these projects that took ultimatum and dictator game out into societies all over the world to try to measure generosity among people, to try to establish essentially what is the baseline level of human altruism, essentially, to be very reductive about it. So John List was an experimental economist, is an experimental economist. <coughs> who liked lab experiments like a lot of economists, but he also liked doing experiments in the real world where people didn't know that they were being observed. And so he had kind of absorbed a sort of dissonance between the received wisdom that the lab seemed to teach and the way the real world could actually work and wanted to ultimately identify just the level and the kind of robustness of the altruism that you see in the lab. So what John List did was he did exactly what everyone before him had done, which is run the same experiment. So ultimatum game, let's pretend the two of us would come into a lab and let's say you're the experimenter. And we would not see each other. We'd be anonymous to each other. And let's say I would be given $10. And I would be told that there's someone else like me in another room that I won't see who um, doesn't get any money of his, his or her own. And I can choose to give some amount of my $10 to that other person. If that person accepts my offer, then I go, he, he goes home with the offer, and I go home with the rest of the money. So if I have $10, I say, I'll give that person $4. And he says, OK, I'll take 4 even though I know the other person's getting a bit more. Then we both go home relatively happy. He has $4, and I have $6. Okay? And if I were uh, the person in charge of the giving, I would say, two cents for you. Yeah. And, and you would say? And I would say, because I'm human, because I'm not an economist. Just so, for the record, Levitt's an economist. I'm just a lowly journalist. Because I'm a lowly journalist, I don't think like an economist does. And I would actually be upset. So an economist, 
who is emotionless, essentially, would, would choose, <laughs> would say to him or herself, oh, well, two cents is more than zero, and therefore, I should take the two cents, and why do I need to surrender my two cents to punish the so other person? Did you make it clear? So if, if a yeah. person rejects, everyone walks out with zero. So if he offers two cents to me and I reject his two cent offer, he does not get $9.98. He gets zero. It's called the ultimatum game because you have to find the ultimatum at which both people can accept it. Now, that's kind of the more fun, more slightly more complicated game. The simpler game that John List chose to pursue was, is called Dictator. And Dictator derives from ultimatum, but it's even simpler, and it's just one direction. There's no ability to rebuff the offer. We come into a room. Uh, we don't see each other. I'm given $10 and told that I can give some of my, some or all of my amount, from zero to $10, to this other person like me in another room whom I will never see. And um, I don't know what that person might use the money for. It's not like the barn building ex experience. So let's pretend for, for a minute that we're the professors running this experiment, and you all are the students who come in. You are the dictator. You're the one, only one who makes a decision. This person has no say in the matter. He only gets to keep what you say he gets to keep. So you're given $10. Let's see by show of hands. Raise your hand if you would give all 10 of your dollars to the person down the hall in the other room. OK, so there's always one or two Gandhis in the room. Who, <laughs> and, and the world needs a, a few. Um, and ra raise your hand if you would give, let's say, $5. So that's like, a, goodness gracious, maybe 40% here? Wow. Uh, raise your hand if you'd give, let's say, one, two, three, or $4. OK, and raise your hand if you'd give zero. Yeah. So, Levitt, what do you think about the zeros? So, the best predictor of people giving zero, it turns out, is being undergraduate economics major. So, how <laughs> <laughs> we got one right here. All right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So, you, you've learned your studies well. Okay. Yeah. So, you get an A for today's <laughs> lesson. So, when John List ran these experiments, he found pretty much like all who'd come before him that people gave, on average, about $3, right? Yeah, three on out three, of ten. Which seems, to, now again, this is an incredibly simplistic reduction of what altruism is about. But it seems to show that in the lab, people, when given an opportunity to give some of what they have been given or some of what they have to someone else who will never see them, who can't thank them even later, that they give some of what they have. But, but let's just stop for a second. Just, I want to say, so hundreds of experiments have been done by this. And the economists and the psychologists involved have taken that as evidence against the standard economic model. What they say is, look, people don't behave, they don't behave in their self-interest. They're eager to give away their money to strangers, even though there's no benefit. Therefore, we need to remake our economic models. A lot of what we write about are how incentives affect behavior, right? And a lot of what we write about are how often very simple tweaks to incentives will affect behavior quite a bit, uh, often in ways that are not expected. So what John List did now, having some more real world experience perhaps than a lot of the other experimental economists, decided to change the parameters. You come in. We give you $10, but instead of having the option to go from giving away from 10 to 0 of your dollars, you can go from 10 to negative 1, which is another way of saying you can take $1 from the person in the other room who will still not see you. So you can walk out now with, let's say, $11, OK? So think about how you might play the game now. I would invite um, the, the very, very benevolent soul who gave $10 before to ask, would you still give all $10 if you now have the option to take one as well? You would. All right. So you're just an outlier who will never be explained by science. <laughs> and thank God. I mean, you know, these people are very valuable to society. Uh, as you can see, however, they're quite rare. But here's what John List found. Once you give people the option to go from negative one, suddenly, in real life, nobody's giving $10 anymore. Practically, nobody's giving $5 anymore. The most common choice now made is zero, correct? So now you see, you go from, now the, the average giving is still positive at this point, right? It's about a dollar and a half or so. But what you've seen is you've just given people one choice. So what it appears to be is that instead of exhibiting just pure altruism, what it may appear to be is that people in an experimental setting kind of have an expectation of wanting to appear like the kind of person who is nice enough to give people some money, as opposed to actually wanting to give the money. And now you can look like a good person simply by not stealing from the other person. But now, John, this goes even further. What if I push it to $10? What if I can take $10 from the other person? I can give up to 10, and I can take up to 10. When you run the experiment like that, you find that instead of giving, on average, people steal. They steal about a dollar and a half, as opposed to giving away $3. In just a few tweaks of the experiment, John List was able to show that these altruists, who were giving 30% of what they had, were actually a gang of thieves when given the opportunity. It's not that the people had changed. 
It's just that the people were responding to the incentives and the particular parameters of the, of the experiment. And that is how we, in a nutshell, try to reassess what we've learned from economic experiments about altruism.